All right, so 2-1 and 2-2. 2-1 -2. is just the introduction, and it's basically telling you what you're going to learn. Um, a couple of object, well, I'm gonna skip all that for now. Yeah. Um, so structured cabling, you have TIA, EIA, EIA is the Electronic Industries Alliance, and then you have Telecommunications Industry Association. You really don't need to know, at, you don't need to know is going off of what I remember of taking the test. I don't think, I don't remember them saying, what does EIA stand for? But you need to know that the EIA slash TIA is a, is a standard for cabling. Especially when they go EIA, uh, TIA, EIA, TIA, EIA, 568A, and there's also 568B. What that is, is the order of colors in your cables um, that you use. We use 568B. I don't know why. That's just what Mr. Vishnoff started to do. I don't know why we don't use A. That's Michael. So it keeps saying like this is a standard, this cable is a standard. Is it like standard in like length or like form? If you look at any Ethernet cable, it will have it will be in one of two orders. The cables will be from left to right orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown, or it will be green, white, green, green, white, green, white, green, orange, white, blue, blue, white, orange, brown, white, brown. So you basically just switch the green and orange, I think. Again, hopefully I'm not like just lying, but uh, it's just a standard in order for everyone that makes an ethernet cable to make it the exact same way so that if you buy an ethernet cable from Best Buy, it's going to be the same order. It's going to work more or less the same as if you bought it from Costco, as if you bought it from GameStop. So it's the same order. Now, the quality may be slightly different or you can buy shielded, not shielded, outdoor rated, indoor rated, that sort of stuff. But the standard is these are the order of the, cable, of the wires in the cable that they go in. And if you don't do that, your computer won't sense it because your computer is hardwired to use one of those two and it will auto sense which one it uses but if your if your pairs are not in the right order it'll screw up peter why do they even have two standards instead of just one i don't know one's older i know that and i, I don't know why b came around because the 568a goes to 95 b um it defined the minimum requirements for the internal communications wiring in buildings and between structures in a campus network, whereas the first major standard described structure for computer networks. Um, oh, B is the new one. Oh gosh, no, I cannot read. I, I cannot read. I thought that said B right there. Just leave me alone. Um, the new standard, it was revised, updated in 2000, a new standard, B was published. This book was published in 2016, I think. Paul. Is there any like, performance difference between A and B? I don't think so. Again, it's the order of the pairs. So B not only includes the order of the pairs, it has subsections, and in the book, I don't know if you guys, as you guys were supposed to read, who wants to tell me one of the struct, one of the sections? D2, twisted pair media. Yes, twisted pair media. What's another one? The optical fiber cabling structure standard. Yep, Op optical fiber and it's on the TV. <clears throat> Commercial cabling standard master document. Yes, so this is essentially anything that's commercial follow that and then twisted pair media that's what is inside of the cables and I'll show you why it's called twisted pair later uh, and then fiber optic so B is the new one and it has a little bit more information so stick with B A is in there again more or less for legacy reasons and again I had forgotten essentially A at all because I never use it I've always done orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown so now, in that document, in that B standard, it basically determines, it defines what things are. So we have the building entrance, equipment room, and telecommunications closet. 
telecommunications closet not only is networking stuff, but it's also phones. So it says here you have 66 block and a 110 block. I'm gonna show you what a 66 block is and what a 110 block is. A 66 block is for phones, at least I hope. 110 block is a patch cable, is a patch panel, so that's ethernet. That's where you punch down ethernet. Um, building entrance, that's where everything External cabling and wireless services interconnect with the internal building cable in the equipment room. So this is going to be the first room we go into. So where also the demarcation point is. Um, Mary, or not Mary, I looked at Michael and Perry at the same time, and I said Mary. So Perry, do you remember what a demarcation point is? Yes, it does have to do with the house. Yeah, do you have so You're close, yeah. It's where the ISP stops. That's where their that's where their equipment stops and our equipment starts. So in our house, it's typically the modem, or if you use your own modem, it's the coax cable. Um, entrance facilities, like I really don't remember that being on the test, but entrance facility is a facility where everything enters, not people, ISP, internet, communication stuff. Equipment room, that's just, we're gonna go into a couple of those too. That's just where, that's a room full of equipment, networking equipment. Very descriptive thing. Very descriptive, again, net, tech guys are not that, um, we're not creative, or they're very, this is what it is, so this is what we're gonna call it. I think that makes them smarter than any Maybe. other scientists. That is true. They don't use Latin. So instead of biology, they should just call it life study. Yeah. Or living study. Study of like things of themselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, in biology, you also study abiotic. Then dead, li then study of dead things. Study of things. Study of things. There we go. Uh, Would that be <laughs> or chemistry, though? Chemistry well, would be science. study of chemicals. Well, science Hence, is chem history. Anyway, we're getting off on a tangent. Um, so, no, one room can serve as the entrance facility, equipment room, and the telecommunications closet. Um, that's more or less our room downstairs is the entrance facility and the telecommunications closet for this building. We have multiple buildings, so each building has its own entrance facility where information comes into that building and from there, internet and networking equipment goes. Um, we're not going to go to all of them. We're basically just going to stay in this building. We may go to the science wing basement. I don't know. It just depends on how much time we have. Backbone cabling. So this this is where you do kind of need to know this. Backbone cabling connects uh, equipment rooms. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so people can follow along. Um, yeah, it interconnects telecommunications closet, equipment rooms, and cabling entrances in the same building and between buildings. So the cabling that goes underneath the ground from this building to the Fine Arts Center is backbone cabling because you can kind of think of it of if you cut that cable, buildings go down. Just like if you cut your backbone, you go down. <laughs> your legs stop working or your arms stop working or you, you, you can die, I think. I don't know. But don't break your backbone, don't break the backbone cabling. Yes, Paul. Does the server there connect to the one in the science wing basement? Yes. Not directly, but yes. Are they like backbone cables or? Yeah, so we have fiber optic cable running from the server room behind me to the um, library closet. And then that one connects. And then that one connects to the science wing, yeah. Um, backbone cabling, horizontal cabling. Horizontal cabling goes from. Oh, sorry, Maddie. What's up? Um, how would you fix a backbone cable like underground if it broke? You gotta pull a new cable. Okay. There's usually conduit. It sucks. Normally, yeah. Normally they have it in a pipe, oh. and you just um, open it up, pull it, and you do something like that. But it, it's not good. It's not fun. Typically, I think we hire companies to do that. Okay. 
I don't think Mr. Vishnoff does that. Because what you have to do is sometimes if you're making a new run, you have to break the cable, you have to, or I'm sorry, you have to break the concrete, you have to dig, you have to put the pipe in, you have to lay the cable, then you have to put the dirt back over, and then you have to re-asphalt or concrete it. And so that's not something that's in our pay grade, nor in our knowledge, nor do we want to do that. So we just hire a company to do it. Um, horizontal cabling goes from the telecommunications closet to, to not devices particularly, but to uh, like wall jacks or things like that are technically access points. So the cabling, you can think of the cabling in this room. You guys see how we have these around the room next to the outlets, we have those boxes. Those are ethernet jacks. They've all been disabled because they don't, we don't really use this room. Um, which is a security thing. Uh, if you guys want to get into network security, one of the things you want to do is disable ports that aren't being used. Because what would be to stop, let's say, a nefarious person from bringing their surface with an adapter and plugging that in and immediately having access to the student Wi-Fi, the student network? Well, we don't want that, so we just disable those. And the way we disable them is we unplug them in our room. So if you plug something into that jack, it won't work. So the, the cabling that goes from that jack to our server room is called horizontal cabling. And that's what a lot of what I've been doing. So if you want an access point in a room, you gotta pull horizontal cable. If you want a camera, you gotta pull horizontal cable. If you want a new desktop, if you want new jacks, you gotta pull horizontal cabling. And sometimes that's as simple as, uh, Oh, I just got to throw it over the wall in the ceiling and you just boop, bring it down and you're you're all set or it could be well darn I had to go from the basement to the second floor through chases that go through bathrooms and up two floors and I don't know where any of the chases are like I don't because you can't just because one of the things that is against fire code is having open access to a bunch of stuff so if a fire starts in the girls bathroom for example they need a wall to separate the girls bathroom from the men's bathroom they also and in that wall if you have a hole it has to be plugged with something so if you have a chase that's this big and the hole is drilled is this big you need to fill the area around it with something to prevent smoke from going so that happens all the time and so if you're running cable like to get into this room you can't just go anywhere you well there's insulation up here so it's actually even harder you have to go above the insulation into the attic pull it along and then drop it through the insulation so it, uh, it's actually once you get past the insulation 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 it's not that bad um, but downstairs is pretty tough but you have to look for a chase, and if there's not a chase, you have to make one, and if you have to make one, especially if you're going through like cinder block, it sucks. So you always wanna find a chase. So one of the things when you're pulling cable is you can't just go, okay, I want my jack right there, so I'm gonna pull my cable right there. Because you may the chase into this room may be back in that corner. So you have to pull cable to go to the chase and back. So you always it's always better to pull more cable than you need than to not pull enough. Because a thousand feet is about a hundred bucks, so I think that's 10 cents a foot. And to pull a cable an extra 30 feet, that's an extra $3, it's not that big a deal. Other than, well darn it, I didn't pull it long enough. Now I have to re-pull the whole cable run and that takes you an hour and a half. And if you're paid at you know $15 an hour, an hour and a half, that's $22. So you could have spent $3 of cable and then used scrap for things like we're gonna to do today, or they had to pay an extra $22 for your time to pull it again. So one thing when pulling horizontal cabling is you typically want to pull more than you need. So like in the science wing, they pulled, thank God they did this, for the access point for the internet, they pulled two cables, even though they were only using one. It was like, we'll need it in the future. And I'm thankful for that, because that's helped me a lot. But does that make sense? Will you need it in the future? Yeah, so future proofing. Yeah, you pull it, um, and then you just you you know you wait maybe ten years, but you're like, thank God they did that because ten years from now they could be, I don't know. It's very useful to have cable 
already in place. Um, and then the last one is, what's the last uh, work area? That is uh, patch cables. So going from the computer to the wall. So from the computer to the wall is the work area. From the wall to the server is horizontal cabling. And between servers is backbone cabling. Make sense? You can, you can kind of work area, where do you think those cables are going to be? From my work in the area that I work. Horizontal cabling is a little, little less uh, intuitive, but backbone cabling is most important because backbone is very important to us as humans. So, questions so far? Yes, Colton. Is it like a chase? Is this a path? Or? A chase is a hole in a wall. Like it's it's a it's a tunnel through a wall. Or I don't know why they they named it chase, but it could be. It goes from the a downstairs closet and it goes up a floor and then into another room. So instead of having, it's a way to have cable running and have it protected. Because if you don't and it's moving or a rat gets to it or whatever, it'll fray and stuff like that. So one thing when pulling horizontal cabling, just an FYI in case any of you guys do this, it's against fire code to have cable touching ceiling tiles. So you'll notice um, there are certain, not exceptions, but like they, what they just don't want, I don't know what they want, what? So hypothetically speaking. Um, the cable you pulled in the server room is against fire code, maybe. If, if, if it's touching the ceiling, now I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it isn't, but if according to fire code, any cable that is touching the ceiling tiles is against fire code so that, that is resting on it so if you had a can we do that to come down, like, i don't know what you're pointing to uh, the tape on the ground can we do that you can't tape it to the ceiling tiles no like on the ground you could tape it to the ground yeah but then that may cause a tripping hazard mm. so you have to secure it so that you can't trip over it which is what these beautiful floor guards are they prevent tripping Yep, and they do have loops that you can drill into. Uh, if you have wood truss work, you can drill it into that. If you have concrete, that's a lot harder. Um, and they have these just loops. They're not they're not fully closed circles. So if you just if you have a cable pulled and then you do do do, you can set them in there, so you're not screwed. But like oh, I already pulled the cable, and because it's a closed loop, I can't do anything. Or you can. Um, there are certain things that you can attach zip ties and stuff like that to. Um, so if you don't have the ability to, sh to drill in these, these loops, you can, you know, if there's a wood truss work, you can attach it that way or whatever. So hopefully I'm not saying anything wrong there. It goes against fire code. Do not use any of my, okay, disclaimer. Do not use anything I say as legal advice or anything like that because I may or may not be wrong about fire code. Those of you watching on YouTube, please don't do that either. Please don't take what I say as law or fire code. There, I'm done. Legal disclaimer, done. Um, <clears throat> so in this book, figure 2-1 is an example of a diagram. So actually, this may be a good thing for you guys to do later. Make a diagram of the school. Again, horizontal cross connect. Um, cross connect is a space where you're going to take one of your multiple cables and connect them to one of the cables. Okay, so that is. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that had an actual space for the term. What you, what you, what you want? Any seniors going on a senior trip in here? No. Okay. Uh, have they gotten a copy of your ID yet? I don't think so. Do you have your driver's license with you? I don't have a driver's license. Do you have a state ID? State ID or passport. passport. Not on this. Okay, you're going to have to bring in your passport. Okay. You're going to do that tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Next time you're teaching, I'm just going to bust in and <laughs> do something related to my job. 
I was just trying to be productive, and you're the one that's making it not. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> See, he distracted me. Now I have no idea where we were. Cross connect, horizontal cross connect. Um, so you have those are. Yes. Is there any such thing as vertical cabling? No, not that I know of. Oh, geez, they have a lot more specific cabling terms than I've ever used. So we're gonna, I'll go over that in a minute when we get there. So on 7-3, again, you guys should be going over all of these and reading it on your own. And if you guys have questions, coming to class with those questions. Okay. I'm not going to necessarily go over every last single thing, especially because we're going to go on a walk and I'm going to bring the book and I'm going to point out what things are in relation to what we have here. So I'm not necessarily defining cross connect or horizontal cross connect or any of that because in a few minutes we're going to go do that. Um, yes. What's the use of like having a patch panel instead of just switches? Uh, organization. That and you have no idea how frustrating it is that when you go, okay, I have a patch of cables and I don't know which one is which. And yeah, I'll, yeah, so we'll get to that. I'll show you. Um, horizontal cabling, this is a really good um, diagram as well. So you can kind of see the backbone comes into our server and then we have a switch or a hub should be a switch then we have patch panels and then D patch cables and then cabling to the LAN is horizontal cabling wall plate patch cable connecting the wall the wall uh, computer to a wall plate so that's really good and again we're gonna I'm gonna show you physically what these look like um, in a few minutes so the last thing is terminating a cable the termination is not it, it's making the ends of these cables that are on the table that you got. So when we're doing this, we're all gonna sit at this table because I don't want all my tools spread out everywhere and it's a little easier to share uh, punch down stuff and, and wire strippers. Um, but those cables are useless right now as cables, right? They don't have the RJ45, which is the plastic part, the little clicky part, click. And they don't have the, the keystone jack, which is what you plug the RJ45 into so it needs to have one of those things or it needs to be punched down into a punch pan into a patch panel if you don't so terminating a cable you can run the cable and not have it terminated i currently have like two or three runs that are ran but they're not terminated so the hard part's done of getting it through the ceiling and down the wall or whatever but they're still not usable because they don't have that plastic part at the end they're just cables chilling in the wall well, and then you may ask, well, why don't you terminate them and then pull them through the wall? Well, putting a plastic part at the end of a cable makes it a lot harder to pull, especially through um, through walls. And you can also damage the RJ45, and so then you have to redo it anyway. So it's simpler to just pull the cable as it is, and then once you get it in place, cut it and, and terminate it. Because once you get good at terminating a cable, you can do um, I don't know, two or three minutes. And then as opposed to, well, I have 132 feet that I need cable. I can buy a 100 foot cable or I can buy a 150 foot cable. And then the plastic part can get damaged or it can get stuck. So as if you guys are doing network installations, it's better to have this type of cable and then just terminate the ends of it. Um, so an RJ45 connector is also called an eight pin eight AP eight P eight C. I don't know what the C stand for, but the reason it's called an oh it's an eight pin connector. 
it's because there are eight pins. There's eight wires in an RJ in a in a Cat six and in an Ethernet cable. There are four pairs of wires. So there's eight wires, and in the RJ forty five there are eight pins. And I'll tell you how you get, how those guys work. Um, last thing, a patch cable used to make physical connection from a computer to a wall plate. You can also use patch cables to connect. Well, at least I do. I don't call them horizontal cross connect cables. I just call them patch cables in our server room. So, yeah, typically, oh, and the last thing, you can only have an ethernet cable for 100 meters. You cannot go further than that. Once you get further than that, you get signal loss and in, in um, inconsistent cable. Attenuation, I think, is the exact term. Um, so typically what you do is you work at 90 feet 90 meters and then that gives you 15 meters that gives you five meters on each end so 15 feet to work with to get it into the server room and get it to where you need to go um, I'm always always paranoid I'm gonna pull it short so even if I pull the cable in the run to the patch cable I then go and I add three feet and then cut it just in case because again better to have a longer cable than it's better to have a cable that's long by six inches than it is to have it short by six inches you don't know how frustrating that is um joseph and then it'll be break time um, unless someone else has more questions can you make a like an ethernet extension cord with like the rj45 on one side and the port on the other side mm -hmm. um, yeah we're gonna do that oh. michael or peter isn't an Ethernet cable, it just has a, the eight wires in it, um, the, the four pairs? I guess, so if yeah. If you run it over a thick, thicker diameter wire, I don't know. Eight ones, and Frankenstein like longer cables? I don't know. I don't know. That gets more expensive because the thicker the wire, more expensive. The thicker the copper wire, the more expensive it is. Well, you might even be able to use like speaker wire for it. Seems like a horrible idea, though. It does seem like a horrible mm -hmm. idea. The amount of effort that would go into making it work is not worth the time. It would be just to use an Ethernet cable. Now, when I say 100 meters, that's between networking devices. That's between a switch and a computer, a switch and a camera, a switch and another switch or something like that. As long as you have something that's in between your device and your, so if you have a switch here and you have a device that's 600 meter, that's 500 meters away, that has to go to this switch. What you need to do is you need to put something in the middle, another switch, or yeah, essentially just put another switch there. They have suspenders, right? They do, I don't know exactly how those, I think you just, but I know a switch, because uh, that's what we do uh, to get some, uh, cable, to get cable some places we need to switch in between. Paul? Is the G cable not necessary if you're just doing wireless? Is the what cable? The G cable. The, the patch cable? Yeah. Yeah. If you're going from your computer to an access point, the Wi-Fi essentially is the patch cable. Okay. But you still need to like plug in your Wi-Fi to the... You still need to plug your router into a switch or something like that, yeah. All right, any questions? All right, that'll be it. Uh, break time.